page, uh, Dutch engineering manual, where he showed how you can do this easily and it will work wonderfully. Where do I get Wi-Fi to show you? What do you mean there's no Wi-Fi? I mean, if they had Wi-Fi, would they need to build a dike with their hands? Obviously not. So if we are to produce content that goes there, an important part of the localization is the carrier. Is the very fact that what you're doing will get there somewhere and somehow. If what you're making is, cannot go through this, then it's bound to remain where it is. And what you did is an intellectual exercise of your own selves. But you don't deliver. This is the very, very small message. Uh, coming here, I have the lucky event of sitting down on the plane together with uh, one of the top officers of, of Cisco Communication and uh, is responsible for Africa. So uh, I checked out my ideas of, of what we can expect for, for, for Africa in, in, in the coming future and what we can expect in exactly that. I mean, the most expensive te technology is available for Africa, will be available for Africa. Uh, you talk about uh, high definition TV and so on and on and on. Where will it available in the house of the person. So if what you're doing is for the people, you don't go through it. They cannot watch you too because if they don't have the bandwidth to watch you too. They are not interested in open source particularly because we pay 4k euros for traders. They pay 90 cents by buying a pirated copy. So they don't give a damn about the fact that it costs 4k euros. It does I can buy practically everything in Ukraine. The reason I'm not running uh, Windows is simply that it burned my computer the last time. But it's not because it's, it's paid or not. It's simply that it doesn't work on that machine. So that's it. Uh, if I was living there, I would simply buy whatever I want for like 15 euros, coming home with the equivalent of maybe 25k euros in, in my bag, try it and then throw it away because for the money it is, I don't really care, I can buy it. System. But that's there. Here, the situation is different. You have to choose. To, so here, the open source culture is determinant in what you do. There, you don't. Have to, you should not expect much attention it because money is not an issue. It's, it is much more expensive in most of Africa, as we were speaking with Friedel just a few minutes ago, to download something because you have to connect and you pay for traffic. Then it is to buy a pirated copy of something that is actually supposed to be paid for, but it's not going to be because it's pirated, and you have it on a CD, go home and use it. Why should you sit down with your 10 feet high pole shaking in the wind for nights and nights in order to finally download something which is supposed to be free and that costs you $120 in bank connection in the end, when with $1 you could have the original outside there and even feel proud because you, you happen to, to steal it. <laughs> well, that's, that's the way it goes in Ukraine, and I suppose it goes all over the planet, be, 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 because it makes sense, if you think about it. I mean, it's, it's, for us, it's, it's a bit of a different mentality, because we just click on it. But you have broken here, you don't have it there. So the situation is completely different. If I want to deliver, if I want to be sure that something will happen, I need a support, I need a carrier that can go there, and can go there for, for sure. There are two strategies here. One is to make very small packages of data. Something that can be so small that even if this stuff stays up for 20 seconds, those 20 seconds are enough to get a bit, then the next bit, then the next bit, then the next bit. And the second important version is the handheld, so-called, that is a flash key or a CD or whatever else. That is something you can reproduce and distribute. But this is a problem because when you work on this stuff, what you come is sort of limited the cooperative behavior. Cooperative behavior is based on the fact that we can interact. I can speak to you and you can listen to me because we are in the same place. If you have a question, you can interrupt me. You can give me a question and I can answer, hopefully. But if you work like this, that's pretty much like old television. There is somebody speaking, the one who makes this and this, 
it goes out. Those who get it, get it. And if they have any questions, well, next time maybe. So this is the second aspect that you have to keep in mind, that if you develop a, a, a cooperative environment under these conditions, these conditions are supposed to be in what we call loose connectivity. That is, sometimes there will be some sort of connectivity of some. And that sum is really, really funky. You have no idea for when, how, and for how long. This is reality. This is 80%. This is not about being late. This is not about being inferior or superior. This is actually about being superior if you think that Google has decided that they shift their main interest from PCs to cell phones. So it's us being inferior in terms of money. And there, there is an important need that we stop looking down on these people with a 10 foot pole thinking that they should develop. First of all, they will not develop because it takes an awful lot of money that is simply not available, even if they really needed to develop. Second thing is, is that it's not written anywhere that we are better than anybody else. They made a choice, we have another choice. This is 80% of the market. Do we want it? We play it by the rules. Don't we want it? We leave it there and they will make their own solutions. Because they are the market and they are empowered. It's not that we command the game just because we have a broadband. But when we develop things in, the, in Western Europe and in, in the United States, we tend to think that we do command the game. Well, we don't. And the result is that the major companies that we have are already turning toward this living the house. Because they make the market. We don't. What we make is Lemon Brothers. Currently. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. But currently, what we make is Lemon Brothers. So we, we happen to be not that interesting anymore. Uh, I'm not going to, into technicalities of, a, of any kind. I don't believe that it's important for, for translators to, to, to understand what, what a broadband is, what a, what a TCP package is, uh, and, and stuff like this. What I really want you to understand is that whenever you make a translation, it's not about words. It's about an entire culture. It's about an entire way of living. It's not writing Big Mac in epic verse. No. That's all. Thank you, Vesco. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about something which you could either consider to be very similar or very different. And I'll leave it to you to decide which one you want to see it as. Um, I, I just want to give you a little bit of background on who I am so that I might convince you to listen to me for a few minutes. Um, it's my first visit to Ireland and I'm from South Africa. And I work for this company called translate.org.za. If you're into software localization, translation of software, you might have heard of us. Uh, if not, I'd be happy to introduce ourselves to you today. Um, but really what I want to talk to you about is sort of the, um, how shall we say, the, the similar problems that happen in the information space that to what Berko is doing now. A lot of what he uh, talked about is now had to do with physical technology, if we want to say it very plainly, hardware. I don't really want to reduce it to being that simple, but for the sake of the discussion, hardware. And some of what I will be talking to you about now are the resources that make other things available, but mostly software resources, uh, but specifically text resources is what I, I want to talk to you about now. Now, I call this the spell checker subproject of the African Network for Localization, partly because um, the, the, the software I'm talking about to you was developed as part of this, and I will talk a little bit about it now, what the African Network for Localization is. Um, but just a little bit of quick background uh, in terms of who we are, the, the company I'm representing. Um, we're a non-governmental organization in South Africa that really want to empower South African languages mostly um, in technology. That could mean a lot of things, and I'm not going to talk about all of it, but some of the things that we have done are the, is the translation or localization of key software uh, for South Africa.